The good thing is that thing can't make coffee. You know, it can't talk to customers, so my job is secure. There's so many reasons why I don't like you. Damn. What? You want to get this on camera? You want to rant now? Some of the concerns I have with bringing in this robot into the company is how it'll be perceived by my employees. I don't want them thinking that they're going to be out of a job. You probably should name it something. Maybe R2, that's probably a good name. That's my tardy taken. <laughs> well, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. It, it looks something like this. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Check out your uh, latest responsibility. Oh. <laughs> what have we got here? Dude, I, uh, I powered it on last night and just kind of went, I just went for it, you know, because hmm. obviously, well, you ran the old one. Yeah. And it's pretty similar, but I'm like, okay, it's, it's all coming back to me. But yeah, it's, um, it's up and running. Nice. <laughs> it's really cool. Let's yeah. Check it out. Yeah. Speed, I remember when we tested it, it's kind of like, when you set up a yeah, mill, you're right. like 25 percent rapids and all that stuff. So we're gonna do play. Okay, it's going down. I'm gonna put my finger above the stop button. <laughs> so you gave it waypoints as where what we did before is we guided it and kind of gave it its direction. Yeah, I so you, you can before. tell it, it, I want you to pass through this. Yeah. Like to get from there to there, actually going that way is a shorter direction, but we don't want it smacking the door, right. you know, so. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna start bumping up the speed. It's super quiet too. Yeah. So should we test the safety feature? Yeah, that's what I was just gonna ask. Okay. Oh, wow. Dude, before it would shove you just a little bit. Yeah, so that was this was This was so much lighter. Yeah, it said protective stop. Nice. Said, now I'm gonna enable the robot. And then I remember it's gonna want me to go to the home position. Oh no, it didn't have to. What do you think the other guys are gonna say? Don't know. I'm sure they'll be excited, <laughs> interested in seeing it because they've never seen them run before. Let's, uh, hey, go get Alex. Okay, okay. go get Alex. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So if you remember, Alex just started like three or four days ago. Let me see what he thinks. I hope it doesn't freak him out. Like he's gonna lose his job or anything. Alex, dude, uh, so you started on Monday. Yes. Meet your new coworker. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen a robot before or anything like that? No, nothing like this. Okay, cool. You wanna program it? Sure. Okay, dude, awesome. Jumping right in. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna show you how to do this, okay? Um, so this is a control pendant. Go ahead and put your hand through there. Okay, and go ahead and touch waypoint. Okay, now it says set waypoint. Now walk over to the robot, grab it, and press that button. This one? No, 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 oh. sorry. This button on top. Okay. Now move the robot. Now let go of that button. Now you can't move it, right? Oh yeah. Okay, so go ahead and push that, that button. And we're gonna, we're gonna move it, uh, rotate it so it's over at that pallet. And uh, I'm gonna help you muscle this into place. I'll muscle? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so this is where what's called the end effector is gonna be. So I'm gonna rotate it. Go ahead and press the button. Great. So we're gonna pretend it just picked up a pallet. Let go and click set waypoint. And then click okay. All right, so now we have two waypoints. Click that waypoint again. Okay, and let's move it over here. You hold down oh, the okay. button and rotate it this way. And then uh, set waypoint and then click OK. And then the next one, you'll turn it and just kind of put it maybe about here right before it goes into the machine. So, OK, let go, set it, okay. OK. Now now it'll reach into the machine. So add another waypoint. Right there. That's great, yeah. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and then set that one. 
Okay, now I keep doing that where it's got to come out of the machine. Like the same spot? Yeah, pretty close. And then let's have it rotate around this way. And you know what? Let's do, um, I don't know about this. We, don't, we definitely don't want it to rotate that way. Mm -hmm. So let's do a waypoint right about right here. here. Okay. Just so it definitely has to pass through that one. And go that way? And then go that way, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so now we got all our waypoints. Yeah. Now what you want to do, you know when you're you're a machinist, so you know when you're running the first thing, you want to put it in like 25% or 5% yeah. rapids. You, you, you want to make sure it doesn't crash. We do the same thing. So there's a slider there, oh, okay. slow it way down. Drag, click and drag, yeah, there you go. Right. And then all you do is you click the play button. See that, that, pl that play button right there? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Dude, can you believe that? Like, literally, it's the first time you saw a robot yes. and you literally just programmed it, which is pretty darn cool. So, yeah. And pretty smart, too. So. Yeah, that's true. You are really smart. That's why you work here. So. <laughs> so, one of the best ways to learn something is simply to get hands on with it. So, that's what I'm gonna let my guys do right now. Just play with the robot, get comfortable with it before we actually put it into production. Now on the flip side, we wanna get this robot set up the right way and as soon as possible. We wanna tap into the information of others. So I've made an appointment with an applications engineer in Burbank at Pneumatic Engineering. Hopefully we can get some type of like tour or overview of what's changed over the last few years and see the latest and greatest of end effectors out there. So let's get on the road. All right, we made it to Burbank. It's actually starting to rain in Southern California. We're here at Pneumatic Engineering. I'm gonna run inside so I don't get wet. Let's go. This is Bethany with Pneumatic Engineering. She's gonna show us some of our products. So we got a UR3, this tiny little guy. UR10, that's obviously the robot we have. They painted the caps red. And uh, there's UR5 in another room, but we just wanna see this device here. So first of all, Bethany, what is this called? Uh, so this is actually the ASCII cube. Okay. Um, it's part of Astral. Uh -huh. um, there's different sizes and shapes. Uh, uh -huh. Usually, like they started off with a little tiny stuff. Okay. Because they were making watches. Uh huh. So doing a bunch of like picking and placing of watch parts. Okay. Um, they've gotten to a really big size, so now it's like kind of out to here. Oh, okay. Um, all it does is it just shakes parts. Huh. So if you want to try and grab um, parts in a certain orientation, uh -huh. um, you can kind of shake it around. Okay. Um, it can go like left, right, back, forward, wow. different corners. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, so we're using a vacuum mm -hmm. cups, mm -hmm. and so obviously we need to provide vacuum power to it. So mm -hmm. that's not an option for us, but if we had one of these, plug and play, we could just plug in and just go. Exactly. That's awesome. And this one actually, this, this, and this all have these things called UR caps. They're uh -huh. kind of like, if you got iPhone apps on the uh -huh. Apple Store, okay. Um, so you just plug it into uh, the UR, okay. And then it has its own screen that you can do all the programming. So you don't got have to it. do any like scripting or anything like that. It has oh, its own man. separate thing. Okay, so. so that's why I'm here. I'm excited to see some of this stuff. Yeah. So the lights on. Can we? That means it's ready to go, right? Yes. Can you? Can we see it? <laughs> okay. Yeah, of course. All right. Okay. So it took a picture mm -hmm. with the light on. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so it found the part within a certain area. Okay. Um, if it doesn't find the part, that's when it goes and shakes. Okay. Until it finds a part in the area that it's looking okay. for. Okay. And it's roughly the center of the tray. Exactly. So yeah. I actually, within the Cognex camera, can set the border okay. um, that I want to pick from. Yeah, nice. Um, so that little red box you see here, yeah. um, it's looking for parts within that box. Okay. And then it will shake until it finds the correct spot. Uh, like a good candidate to pick up. Exactly. Okay, because it looked like some were in it, but they were like touching each other, and so it rejects that. So you can kind of teach like the um, tolerance value okay. um, of which to find it. So if it sees it, but it's kind of rotated, and yeah. you don't want it to be rotated, you can kind of oh, change got those it. so that it fits exactly where you want it to okay. be. Okay, all right. <laughs> and it's just re <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so you told it we want like five or something or four. Exactly. Yeah. So what I need to do is go back 
research UR caps because mm -hmm. it's the first time I had heard it, mm -hmm. and then try and maybe if I have some type of uh, end effector, if it has a UR cap, that's preferred because it's literally plug and play, it's right? It's plug and play, exactly. That's awesome. Okay. All right, and Bethany, I also noticed this yes. right over here. <laughs> this is what I'm going to be using. Not mm -hmm. this, but I'm curious. This is a vacuum, right? Yes, it is. Okay, and it looks like it plugs in. Mm -hmm. So the robot is turning this on and off, but obviously you need a vacuum supply. Exactly. Okay. Um, so whenever I run the program, um, it is off mm -hmm. until I tell it to turn on. Um, so you have it plugged into the air and everything like that, but uh -huh. then once it turns itself on, then is when it actually does a vacuum. Okay, so it's normally closed. Correct. And then the, the it signals to, to open it and which lets. Um, now is this air pressure and it creates venturi or is it actual vacuum? It's vacuum. Okay, yeah. good. All right, so that line don't pinch goes that all one. the way that way <laughs> to a, a separate off-site vacuum yes. pump. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and then um, okay, my, I'm curious about this. When you have a stack, mm -hmm. what's the application? Because that stack gets shorter and shorter. Right. Do you have to program the thickness? Does it sense pressure? How does that work? So actually, one of the things that comes with the UR mm -hmm. is a palletizing sequence. Okay. Um, so I just teach the top mm -hmm. um, and the bottom point in which I'm going to pick up. Okay. And I say I want you to pick up six parts within that. Okay. Um, go a straight line, um, and it does it all for you. So okay. I just have to teach the approach and uh -huh. the pickup point, okay. and then the last and the first point. Yeah. So you would you would uh, teach like the bottom piece, mm -hmm. put it there, save that waypoint, mm -hmm. and then fill up the stack, teach at the top one, and mm -hmm. say that there's six pieces in exactly. between, mm -hmm. and it will calculate the distance. It will do it all for you. Okay. So uh, sometimes we're well, we are going to be running plates mm -hmm. that, that vary in thickness just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that it can go down until it? Uh, senses force? Exactly, yes. Okay, is it also palletizing? Um, not in the palletizing wizard, Okay. Um, but you can do something like an if statement or a different type of programming that says, if I sense a certain force, I want you to do this action. Okay. So that's an option as well. Okay, so I haven't programmed a UR in like four years, but I think it's an L move where it moves linear? Yes, or, it does. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then when it, when it senses this much force, mm -hmm. then stop, activate, go up to the next waypoint, mm -hmm. go do something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. All right. It's all coming back. There you go. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. So I noticed behind us there's a few more end effectors. Mm -hmm. Can we look at those? Yeah, real quick? definitely. Right. Okay. So this is a Zimmer one and this is Robotique. Okay. Um, like I was saying before, there's so many different options for different applications that yeah. you're doing. Yeah. Um, this is a handy from Robotique and then a Zimmer Gripper. Okay. Um, if it doesn't have uh, a UR cap, uh -huh. you just plug it in and do the same thing that we were doing here where we right. just say high or low for okay. the tool. But also with these, you can you can change the amount of force it exerts, right? Uh, with this one specifically, yeah. Uh -huh. So okay. you can do the different forces, you can do different speeds mm -hmm. that you want to open and close, you can even do uh, different positioning. So okay. if you want to only close halfway, right. you can do that as well. So you could pick up a steel bar or an egg mm -hmm. and specify we're not going to crush the egg, but we really need to grip it hard to pick up that steel. Right? Yes, That's so you can cool. you can vary forces that way. Okay, well I've learned so much. Awesome. Bethany, thanks so much for your time. Let's head back, guys. Okay, I just learned a ton. So what I want to do right now is head back to Simi Valley, get some of these ideas I got in my head into my CAM and CAD system so that I can make some of this tooling to finally free up my guys to use their brains for higher end production. I don't want them, I can't afford to have them running pallets anymore. We make close to a thousand a year and just that menial work, it's gotta go onto the robot. So next time, next episode, we're gonna walk you through what we did what the vacuum grippers did, the, the, we gotta develop a pallet that holds them that's clamped and unclapped by the robot. We got a lot of work ahead of us. So if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do so and click that notification bell so that you're one of the first ones to watch it. So until next time, go innovate your production. So until next time, I want you to subscribe so that you can, ah oh, darn, got it mixed up. In the next episode, hopefully we'll have some content of how I built it, how it works, and then so far, so good. Let's just get moving, and uh, I don't know what I'm saying.